Transient Analysis. Once again, download starting design files from the eLearn site. And once you decompress them, you'll be able to open up the project. Uh, and you'll be able to access it with File Open and then navigate to your desktop. In my case, I just have the default design files folder. And then the project is called Transient IC. Once we do that, double click on the schematic. And what we see here are two individual schematics a charging RC network and a discharging RC network. Um, and essentially we have variations on the voltage sources. So initially this is a 10 volt source, this is a zero volt source, and a similar value of passives. And what we've done is we've labeled the, uh, the node in between here charging and discharging. The only thing you'll notice is in the top corner we have some initial conditions. I see in this case 10 volts and over here zero volts. And then this compile mask, the rect the gray rectangle. And essentially this is a way of easily uh, adding or removing a piece of the circuit from uh, compiling and simulation. So in the right here, this is the normal circuit uh, with the compile mask not active. But if I click on the red triangle having it pointing upwards rather than down, you'll notice everything inside is gray out, in other words inactive. Um, and when the triangle is pointing down, um, the uh, gray box has gone away, and so the circuit that you see is active. So we're going to play with these variations so that we can um, see the behavior of simulation when we force those initial conditions and when we don't. So to begin with, we will simulate the design uh, with just the left circuit. The charging circuit is set to zero volts. So we can first of all go to the configuration by uh, going to the toolbar. And here it is pulled out just for easy reference. So we have essentially running the simulation. This is um, accessing the setup dialog. And the third one is generating the netlist. So let's begin by going to the setup. We want to make sure that the, only the transient analysis is enabled, as shown here. And then we're going to uh, also look at the values for the analysis. The transient start time is set to zero. This is the start time where the data is collected for the wave viewer and hence the viewing um, waveforms. The simulation will always start at zero though, regardless of the value. Next is the transient stop time, which should be set to two milliseconds. This is the end of the simulation. The transient step time should be set to 15 microseconds. This value sets the initial time incremental step at which calculations are made. Uh, during a simulation, the value can be smaller based on tolerance set and the advanced options, which we'll see in a later module. Um, if the value is too small, you might see large delays when you run the simulation. In other words, it's doing a lot of calculations and has a lot of uh, intermediate data points where it's calculating values. And there's also the transient max step time, which as the name implies is the maximum value um, for, the, uh, for that parameter. Now, there is also the use initial conditions, which we want to have disabled right now. If we go to general setup, we want to make sure that the active signals, charging and discharging, are on the right. And that corresponds to those two nodes that we have here, charging and discharging, um, where the RC networks meet. So uh, with that completed, we'll run the simulation, which we can do by clicking on that first icon in the mix toolbar. And there we have our waveforms created. We press VD, view fit document. Uh, that will size it up nicely. So what we see on the top um, is our charging waveform, which is 10 volts. And that is unchanging uh, for the duration from 0 all the way to 2 milliseconds, the extent of our simulation. And if we review the schematic, this is not a surprise because we have our 10 volt source here being applied across. So once everything settles out um, through the, the RC network, this voltage level here charging uh, also 10 volts. It will settle out to be a maximum here. And that's done right from the beginning because we do not have this, um, this piece of the circuit. The initial condition of zero volts is not being applied. So there's really no change in behavior. And so it's a straight across 10 volts. The second signal discharging is much more interesting. It begins at 10 volts and then decays down to zero again over the um, extent of the simulation from 0 to 2 milliseconds. And if we look at that node here, discharging, not a surprise because our initial condition here is 10 volts. 
the, the V2 voltage of zero uh, will essentially discharge the capacitor, which is precisely the waveform that we're seeing right here. So the sim simulation is behaving exactly as we would expect. Now we're going to go back to our schematic, and we're going to collapse the compile mask on the left-hand circuit. In other words, um, the zero volt condition will apply at the charging node initially. And then we'll just run that simulation again by clicking on that first icon. There we have what we'd expect. The initial condition of zero is where the simulation begins. And then over time, we see that um, we reach 10 volts because of that uh, voltage source that we have over here, the 10 volts. So it settles out to be exactly 10 volts at the charging node. We're now going to return to our schematic, and this time we're going to turn on our mask, compile mask for both of those. And what we'll do instead is we're going to modify the capacitor uh, simulation parameter. So what we're going to do is double click on C1 to get its properties, and then go down to the model section, click on edit to edit the model, and then go to parameters, and then give it an initial voltage of 0V. And then we're going to check the component parameter so it's visible on our schematic. Click OK, and then I'm just going to pull that 0 volts over here so we can easily see it in the schematic. And then in the second circuit, we'll do a um, similar thing for C2 here. And what we're going to do is edit its parameters and uh, give it a value of 25 volts. And also make sure we have the component parameter enabled. So with that change, I'm now going to go ahead and run the simulation. And what we see here is not what we would expect. We see a straight 10 volts across for the charging, and the discharging is at 0 volts. So there's no behavior change, which is not what we'd expect because uh, we've got those initial conditions. The reason why we don't see that behavior is within the configuration. If you look at the transient analysis setup for the transient analysis, um, what we need to do is to use the initial conditions. So we need to, in this case, enable that checkbox. We want to use the initial conditions that are part of the simulation models. So if we do that, click OK, run the simulation again, and now we see the behaviors we expect. A charging from 0 to 10 volts, and then a discharge on the right-hand circuit from 25 down to 0. So here, initial conditions of 0 volts, charges up to 10 through the V1 source, and on the right, initial condition of 25, discharging down to 0.